Greetings to you all. You are welcome to today's lesson. And today we are going to look at computer input hardware, and it is brought to you by Kapoor Bernard. So when you look at uh, this illustration or this image, this picture, you will find that we have some of the input hardware devices. We also have output uh, hardware devices. Others are processing devices. So for example, if you look at a USB, is a storage device. When you look at this monitor, is an output device. When you look at a, a printer, is also an output device. When you look at, uh, we can talk about speakers, these are also output devices. But today, our emphasis is on input devices. So some examples that we can identify here, we have a mouse, we have a keyboard, we have a microphone, we have a webcam, we have uh, a digital camera. So these are some of the input devices to mention, but a few. So going forward, we are going to look at a variety of these input devices in details. And to begin with, we can talk of a keyboard. So a keyboard is one of the input device category, and it is basically used for inputting text. And to define, we can say a keyboard is an input device consisting of a set of keys, or call them buttons, used to operate a computer. Then we have different types of keyboards, and the major one is a quarter. This is a universal one, and it was named Quate because of its first six characters that are on top in the alphabetical order. So in the alphabet row, we have those keys, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, Quate. And then there are other setups or types of keyboards that are available. We have those ones which have uh, letters numbered from D, V, O, R, A, K. Others are normal, A, B, C, D, E. Others are G, K, O, S. Others are Quat Z and the rest. So when you look at this keyboard, this is the normal keyboard. You can call it the extended keyboard. It has these major buttons. You can talk of uh, the escape key. For example, now I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation. If I want to exit it, I will press escape. Then we have buttons that are numbered from F1 up to F12. These do different functions. For example, you can press F1 for help. If you are maybe on a projector and you want to display, you could press F4 depending on some uh, functions that are set on that computer and also extra buttons. Then if you want to maybe to install Windows on some computers, you could use F9, for example, HP computers, if you want to install Windows, you can press F12 if it is a Dell machine and others. So those function keys have different functions. Then the backspace key, this one is used to rub characters or to delete characters from right to the left. Then we have other keys like control. This one is used in conjunction with other keys. For example, if you want to save, control S. If you want to print, control P. If you want to paste, control V. Then we have other buttons. Uh, these are direction keys. These ones, in case you are in a document, you want to move up, you use the up arrow key. You want to move to the right, you use the right arrow key. Left, also the down arrow key. Depending on the function that is needed at that time. Then, in case you are playing games, these ones can help you. Let's say you are playing uh, need for speed, you can use it to control the car 
either from knocking the borders and the rest. Then numeric keys, these are numbered from zero to nine in case you are writing numbers or numeric uh, characters. And other keys, we shall look at them in details when it comes to the use of the keyboard. Let's continue to look at number two, which is a barcode reader. This one is basically used in reading barcodes. For example, in supermarkets, you are purchasing some products. They will use this barcode to capture their prices and other details. So these barcodes, these barcode readers come in uh, different sizes, different make. For example, if you look at uh, this one, it can come when it is wireless or it is wired. So those are different make, and then their purpose is to read these codes that are attached to a product. If a product has been uh, put in stock, you have to put its details to do with prices and maybe expire date. The barcode reader will actually read all that information that is stored on that gadget. So we can say that a barcode reader is an optical reader that uses laser beams to read barcodes that are printed on items, usually in supermarkets. A barcode normally consists of a unique set of vertical lines and spaces of different widths, which represent different information about the item it represents. So these are the barcodes. So these barcodes are read by the other gadget we saw and we called a barcode reader. So different uh, heights, widths represent uh, unique information according to how it was designed. Then going forward, we need to look at magnetic strip card reader. This one is also an input device category. And basically this one reads the magnetic strip on the back of the card, uh, call them credit cards, uh, bank ATM cards, and other similar cards. Also, we even have those uh, uh, national IDs. They also have uh, that space that once it is put in a magnetic strip, it can read the information that is there. So once they, uh, they are exposed to their reader, one is able to get the information from there. For example, when you look at this, this is an example of a magnetic strip card reader. Once it is put there, someone can transfer money. You can withdraw money using that card. Those who have been in supermarkets, we have seen this one is now common. You take your card, you pay goods using your card. And what reads it is called a magnetic strip card reader. It is also an input device. Then going forward, we look, we look, uh, let's uh, look at the mouse. It is also an input device. It is a handheld device for pointing. It is a pointing device in, uh, used for inputting data. It allows you to move a pointer from one place to another. It can also allow you to select items or to select an area on your computer screen. There are different types of mice. And we have those ones which have a ball under their mouse. I mean, under that mouse, it is basically to sense movement and then as it senses movement, it is able to move either left, right, or it is for scrolling. Then we have those ones which are optical. Basically, these ones use a, a light emitting diode and photodiodes to detect movement. So for those which use light, if you can briefly look at this mouse, you can see it is blinking. And so as it is blinking, the computer will sense the, the movement, and then you are able to click or to move from one point to another. When you look at this mouse, that is an example. 
but this is wired. So meaning that a wire is attached to the system unit and then it is able to function. Then let's look at other pointing devices such as a stylus pen and a digitizing tablet. We also need to look at a cordless mouse. We look at a trackball, a touchpad, touch screen, a track point and joystick. To begin with is a stylus pen and a digitizing tablet. So this one is attached to the system unit and then you use this pen to write on this surface. For those ones who have been, uh, maybe if you were getting a national ID, that space where I use it to put your signature, an e-signature, that is the, the digitizing tablet. And what you use to write there is a stylus pen. So you write on that surface and then the information you write there is seen electronically or it is transformed into the electronic form and it is stored. Still looking at the input devices. If we can briefly have an explanation by ink, we can say a stylus pen. The pen lets you draw on what is called a digitizing tablet that mirrors the surface area of the computer screen. The pen can be used as a standard mouse without wires connected to it, or also as a free flowing drawing device. So others can have wires, others don't have wires. Then the pen is useful for drawing, since drawing graphics with a mouse tends to be inaccurate. So if you are good at drawing graphics, you can use uh, a stylus pen to draw on, a digitizing tablet and whatever you draw is transformed into electronic on your screen. Then a cordless mouse. So a cordless mouse connects to the computer using wireless technology, giving flexibility to the user and to move the mouse around a wider working area. The mouse runs on a battery. When you move the mouse, it sends an infrared beam to a sensor which interrupts it causing the pointer to move. Look at that mouse. So this mouse is basically wireless. So you have to put this one into your system unit. You attach it in one of the ports and then this mouse will be able to sense it. If you look at this mouse, it is wireless. And inside you have to put batteries. If I can try to open, uh, So inside there are batteries and then it is charged. And then you start using it, the pointer to move on screen and other uh, commands that require using a mouse. Okay, let's move forward to a trackball. The trackball use, uses the same principle as the mouse, except that the rollers are reversed the ball is on top. It can remain stationary on your desk. So the person using a trackball is basically using this. You keep rolling that as the pointer moves on screen. Then when you need clicking, the buttons are there. You want also scrolling, the scroll bar is there or the scroll button. Let's move next to the touchpad. Touchpads are common on laptops as uh, one way to move the pointer on screen. The touchpad has sensors that sense a user's touch and send a signal to the computer commonly on laptop computers. So they have left button, right button, and the whole of this, is the touchpad. So you keep putting the finger. Once you are moving the finger on that surface, also the pointer is reflected on the screen. Next, touch screen. I'm sure most of us have seen smartphones. We have seen uh, touch screen computers. We have seen uh, touch screen TVs. 
So a touch screen is a touch sensitive input and display device. So if we, we look at the output device, we shall also find the touch screen as one of the output device. But for today, we are looking at it in form of input device. So it senses your touch and then it issues commands. Users can interact with these devices by touching areas of the screen. With some smartphones, portable media players, and other personal mobile devices, you can touch the screen to perform tasks such as dialing a phone number, entering text, and making on screen selections. So, for example, if you look at this phone, you are able to enter your gadgets, I mean your digits, by dialing numbers on your screen. So here you are able to make a phone call. You're able to scroll through your phone. Hopefully we can see that. That is an example of a touch screen. Going forward, look at that. So here is a touch screen computer. This one, you can call it even a 360 machine, which you can fold and even turn it into a laptop or a tablet. All those are touch screen devices. Let's look at a track point. A track point, also called a pointing stick, is a pointing device located in the middle of the keyboard between GH and B keys. The control buttons are located in front of the keyboard towards uh, towards the user. So the track point is operated by pushing in the general direction the user wants the uh, cursor to move. Increasing the pressure causes faster movement. So uh, on some computers, you will find this. This is the point I'm talking of. This one is a track point. So for example, also my laptop has that point you keep uh, moving it, you keep moving it position anywhere on your screen. So the faster you move also, the faster it moves. That is a track point. So next we need to look at the, uh, one of the last one of the last input device for today's lesson. We shall look at more of the input devices in our next lesson. We look at a joystick. A joystick consists of a stick that pivots on a base and reports its angle or direction to the device it is controlling. Joysticks are often used to control video games and usually have one or more push buttons, which state can also be read by the computer. So here is our joystick. So the person can keep controlling this. Also, it has buttons that you can press as you are playing your games. Pause, rewind, all those ones can be done by that joystick as you play your games. So I thank you for listening. Please put comments uh, down there in the chat. We shall be uh, happy to see your comments. Remember to subscribe and share the link to your friends to enjoy more lessons. Coming next, we shall be looking at more input devices and then output devices. May God bless you.